Hey, I'm the professional wrestler with the most John-based ring names in the history of the business. Johnny Nitro, John Morrison, Johnny Mundo, Johnny Impact, Johnny Caballero, Johnny Elite. Real name, John Hennigan, and I'm here on the Bootleg Universe podcast. Your, you know, your, your career, like I remember there was a point when it was like you, Shelton, Benjamin, and Carlito. Yeah. And the three of you were like, it was a question of who was going to be WWE champion first, right? Like who was going to end up being the face of the company? There, there's moments in time where, yeah, like almost anyone in the business has had a moment where they could have been champ or they were the guy, even if it's brief. Because, uh, like, or maybe they thought they did and they didn't really. It's hard to stay motivated in the business if you haven't had that or thought that it could be you. But, I mean, this could be biased. But, yes, me, Shelton, Carlito, at a point in time, I think between the three of us, any one of us could have been champ. I feel like with you it goes beyond just being champ. Like, there was a, and I, and I've confirmed this with, um, with other, you know, like a, dude, a lot of wrestlers have, have said this about you. Yeah. Like a lot of people thought you would be an iteration, a variation, your own version of John Cena. Man, that's the wrong John. Um, and I, are you talking about the way Cena is booked or kind of face of the company, the face of the company, face of the face of wrestling. Right. Cause you're, you're, you know, like, like this is back to some of the stuff that I've thought of before where we were speaking of earlier. Um, I've had a few missteps and also to be the face of the company, it requires this like raw ambition and almost like, like selfish ambition that you can't say is wrong or bad because you're working hard to live your dream. But it was hard for me always to put the pedal to the metal and take, take, take from everybody and ignore family and friends, holidays, weddings, because I started to feel guilty and it's not to say that anything would have been different if I had just put the pedals to the metal and gone to every event and done everything that's not fair because I don't know that but it's interesting I don't necessarily feel like that anymore I did for sure at a certain time but I think a few things happened that, that changed my trajectory which are the first one was like the the first one really was like the i mean this goes back to punk too like the steroid scandal in 2007 mm. um and it always kind of like was irksome that the list of names came out and there's definitely people that were not on the list that were definitely on substances mm-hmm that didn't get in trouble because the company cares about appearances for sure. And they have to, cause yeah. that's, that's what a company is. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the first time that my, like my run was questioned by the company and by myself personally. And when I was suspended, that's when I dropped the ECW title to CM Punk in 07 and when I returned, ended up being paired with the Miz as a tag team mm -hmm. instead of looked at as like a singles um, champion. And at that point in time, I remember it was, um, I mean, one of my monikers was the new face of extreme, mm -hmm. which was not even my idea. It was a Vince idea mm -hmm. as, as if the new face of ECW, the new face of Tuesday Night Wrestling, like this is going to be one of the guys he's going to beat everybody. He's going to go on. And, um, that 
changed, and I don't know if it permanently changed or if it was a temporary thing or it would have been a temporary thing, but it changed me and it changed how I kind of saw things Mm -hmm. because I didn't have the confidence that I previously had in the company that I worked for and the employers and, and also like in the decisions I was making. Yeah. So it sounds like your uh, confidence in yourself really got hurt. It was shook then. Yeah. Yeah. Which is interesting because my uh, analysis of you, may, may may I share that? Sure. So, have I ever told you the story of how, like, when I, I used to work at a credit card company, and then I, I quit, I quit my job, and like, Tell, no, I don't so, think I've gotten the full deal. So I, after after Northwestern, I worked at uh, Discover, the credit card, the credit card that's not accepted everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I lived in like the <laughs> suburbs of Chicago. It was fucking terrible. I worked at a 1950s style corporation. Like you know me, you know there's no version of me that fits into that, that environment, that. right? Yeah, but exactly. Yeah, yeah. They 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 just didn't like me from day one because they were like. Is this guy, he's not fitting in. Right. It, was, it was terrible. Uh, so I quit or I was about to get fired and I quit or whatever. Uh, quit first. Nice. I quit first. I quit first, <laughs> but I quit before they could fire me. But I was like trying to like, you know, uh, set up this whole Hollywood uh, gig. Yeah. But I imagine you probably like <laughs> saw problems with, with the company and had solutions. Yeah. And people and companies like that don't want to hear solutions. I so. told uh, <laughs> the, my first week there, uh, I told uh, one of the, the top six people at the company, like I gave them like a, I sent them an email. Hey, here are some changes you can make that will improve your. Right. Right. Like they were like. Like who, service, who's... the way the company right, right. Who's like, received a yeah, lot of things. Yeah, yeah, like I was like, yeah. I was like, you should rebrand because, you know, and also you've got some kind of illegal practices going on that, they're, I mean, they're not technically illegal, but they're completely immoral. Like that you're. If you're, they you're, become public knowledge. Yeah. Like I was like, you're, you know, you're basically selling products to Hispanic people and fearing them into buying uh, like a, a, a type of insurance. Gentle yeah. things, insurance. Okay. That, that, that were like kind of bogus. Right. So I'm like, okay, anyways, enough shooting on this company. Okay. <laughs> when I was like quitting, I was like, I'm going to go to move to Hollywood and I'm going to be friends with that guy. And that was you. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hey, awesome. So um, it was very like, ran- not even yeah. random, but it was like, it was no, literally. It was random because, well, yeah, maybe there's no randomness. There's no randomness. It's all it's all meant to be. A good, yeah. A good coincidence that uh yeah, that we ended up meeting. We ended up friends. meeting well, years later, right? So this yeah. was this was uh oh oh eight. Right. Oh eight when this happened. So we we became friends in what, uh twenty fourteen? Fourteen, yeah. Twenty fourteen. So, you know, good good amount of time went by. But I just thought you were the coolest fucking dude, man. You had like the like like your outfit was dope. You had this like Hollywood well, like, like what I thought Hollywood was, right? I mean, it was the Hollywood stereotype. Yeah. That's what the whole game, Johnny Nitro gimmick was. Yeah, it was amazing. I was yeah. like, dude, I want to hang out with that guy. Where does that guy fucking eat? Where does that guy like work out? I want to go, I want to go there. Um, Melrose. Melrose, yeah. And then you don't really- Ed Hardy, <laughs> Ed Hardy. And you've Christian <laughs> Audugé. <laughs> but um, it felt like your uh, your character- like the character went away. Yeah. And you started relying on the physicality. Um, at what, at like a, in 2011 or it was, a, it was, a, after? it like, was like a slow, it was like a slow evolution. I think it, it did. Like, cause in 2007, I was going really hard on the, Jim Morrison, and it was great. warrior poet thing. It was epic. It was beautiful. Epic. You like had the coolest outfits. You come out and you're like, you feel, you felt like a character from like the seventies. Yeah. And I mean, I was immersing myself in like, I read uh, his autobiography, mm-hmm. a different biographies, poetry, his spoken word poetry, <laughs> like all of his stuff I was reading books that he said he read like a, uh, William Blake, Charles Baudelaire. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Palace of Wisdom is just a line from William Blake poem. <laughs> the Road of Exodus leads the Palace of Wisdom. But um, when uh, the trajectory changed, and instead of being John Morrison, and I was part of a tag team, probably without knowing it, like I dropped a lot of like the narcissistic warrior poet, which is meant to be a, he- a heel 
hence the narcissism, um, and changed to more of like a real person because I was constantly having to deal with the Miz. And when I say deal with the Miz, I mean every actor in every scene has to deal with their scene part. Mm -hmm. And so having a relationship on screen with a character constantly makes this like Lone Ranger type warrior poet character not as easy. And so, yeah, it faded. For sure. I, I can see how Mike's like a hard dude to no. play off of because he's so... He's, he's very specific. He's big, yeah. One way and um, to make that work, like I dropped... And actually, if you watch early the early Dirt Sheet, I was still Morrison, mm -hmm. but it was like a little turned down and the John Morrison of 2007 probably wouldn't have any friends. And so changing that to like constantly have a friend on screen and off screen too, like this is a good guy. Then uh, it, it just, yeah, it, it changed a lot of what I was doing. Mm. Yeah. Miz is a good guy. He cut a promo about himself and your best man speech at your wedding. <laughs> just ask him. He'll tell you he's a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, man. Uh, I guess there's no real point to what I'm, what no, I'm saying, but I, I just, I guess, you know, I, so it, it, I mean, like, there's a lot of things about the, my career in the business. Like the business comes in waves and like sometimes like you're up and sometimes you're down and then you're back up. But if you're not paddling between waves, sometimes you're not in position to catch the next one and you miss one and you miss two. And then it's time to reassess and think, how do I get back to where I was? Um, I'll go on mm -hmm. a tangent here and say, add this to it. Like when you miss a wave or two and you're with WWE, it's like you're on a fast train and you're also missing life. Mm -hmm. You're missing birthdays, holidays, family, friends. Like I missed like by five, 10, 15 year class reunions mm -hmm. or 20 or two. Um, and so you just kind of get like put into a container. And if you're not happy in the yeah. container, it's like, it's just kind of rolling. Yeah. And it's just roll. If you're not happy in that container that you're in and you're missing waves, then it's time to change. So I left right. in 2011. But I feel like, and I, and this is how I maybe we'll, we'll wrap this up. Maybe we yeah. do, but, but I feel like you, I look at you as a character actor. That's why I cast you as a character actor. And, you know, and I don't mean in, character. I, yeah, I, no, I, and I don't mean like no, not non-leading man. I mean, you're, you're a character actor in that right. like, you can play a variety of characters. You're very talented as a performer. And like, I would love to see you now at the, the spot you're in, like lean in on that more and more and more and more and just develop uh, like, like a character, a new character, like a new character. Like a new fucking character. Yeah, I know. I've been I've been thinking about it. A new character that. Um, so Johnny Drip Drip was a supporting character. Mm -hmm. A new character that's a leading character. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, and uh, you know you've 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 ventured out into a lot of other stuff, and it's freaking great. You know, I've, I've boomed the bounty hunter. Loved so, it. You've got the. You've got a new. You've got yeah, your I've got a new thing, and I'll, I'll say this about the Iron Sheik Massacre, and I was saying the business comes in waves. Like, you're with WWE, and when you get off the train, you have a lot of time to reflect on what you could have done, what you could have changed. And um, in 2014, around when um, I met you, I had already met the Sheik a few times, mm -hmm. but he asked me, or his nephew did, to uh, push him down the red carpet in his wheelchair. And I remember doing that and thinking like, huh, you know, like here's a guy that's had higher highs and lower lows than me. And he seems really happy. Mm. And he seems like what he's doing is to like make sure everyone around him is having a good time. And then I thought like, why is he doing that? Like, is he just popping the crowd because that's what he wants to do? Or is it because he has pride in who he is and his power, you know? And, um, I think that's what it was because 
if it's not pride that's your motivation, it's not authentic mm. and it's not fun. And he was fun. So around then I realized I kind of want to explore like this character more. And um, I'll fast forward <laughs> quite a bit into 2018 when I was marrying Taya, Kira, AKA Taya Valkyrie. Um, we also had a lot in common and we were talking about the business and things that affected us. And I realized I wanted to make something with her and um, make it about wrestling and some of the experiences that we shared. And I kept thinking about this character, the Iron Sheik, uh, Khosrow Vaziri, the person versus the Iron Sheik, the character. And um, we ended up making a horror comedy because she loves horror and I love comedy about an Iron Sheik doll that comes to life and here is a bunch of new school wrestlers disrespecting him, his generation and his legacy because constantly as a pro wrestler, that's something that's floating in your head. Mm. What legacy am I leaving? Yeah. Um, how am I being perceived? And is, does the things that I've done matter? Like, are they going to yeah. continue to matter? Sure. So we, uh, made a horror movie about a doll that kills himself mm. and it debuts in LA on November 5th. Dude, congrats. And uh killer cross or now he goes by cross. Carrying cross. Karrion cross in it. PJ yeah, black, uh, Taya and myself also Holly meow, super Panda. And, um, the voice of the Iron Sheik is done by Khosrow Vaziri and uh, Presley, and the only dog ever to be signed with by WWE. And you directed it. And it's the it. first thing that I've I've directed of substance. Um, I co-wrote Boone the Bounty Hunter and mm -hmm. the, this one. Uh, well, and you produced Taya Boone the Bounty Hunter. And like you it. produced it with a capital P. I saw it, you do yeah. that. Yeah, uh, that would not have produced the crap out of Boone. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, Ty and I wrote this, um, produced it together with the help of some other people, and. I directed it and starred in it alongside all the wrestlers that I've mentioned. And um, it's been a, <laughs> a long time coming and um excited for people to see it. I think people in the wrestling community and um, the horror community and just fans of storytelling are going to like it. And I hope they do. And I'm going to find out soon. I can't wait, man. Yeah.